Hey, Nation Nation, we're back with Alex Fields uh, up in Minneapolis, sir. Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee and I send you well wishes, my friend. You're up in Minneapolis. There's certainly a lot going on. Um, you you, you keeping, keeping safe on all fronts? Yeah, it's, uh, it was a little bit touch and go here in the city for a little while, but it's, uh, you know, it's calmed back down. It was just a very, very sad situation all around, really. And um, yeah. But I, I feel like, you know, we've gotten through it and you know all the officers have been you know charged now and all of that so it's it's calmed down a lot we've got a lot more national guard presence and stuff like that so yeah all right all right well you know been thinking about yeah uh but on a happier note you're uh typing this summer uh, <laughs> you're uh doing some content development on how to be an mssp a managed security services provider uh, what's going on? You're pretty prolific. Yeah, and uh, this is a this is an important topic um, for our industry. Now, you know, I work for an organization, Success Computer Consulting, and yep. we're actually a little bit ahead of the curve on on the development of this. And um, unfortunately, like a lot of our peers in the industry, you know, aren't aren't there yet, and and they're going to need some help getting there. I think. And the the reason that it's important to share this knowledge and to make sure that you know, as an industry, we mature, and especially in security, because it's it's becoming uh, too dangerous for us not to be. And there's been a lot of stuff in the news recently. Uh, this this spring, there were a couple major MSPs that were hacked, and they took customers down with them and stuff like that. So I imagine that it's only a matter of time before MSPs become a highly regulated industry, similar to like mm -hmm. if you work in the financial services world, or um, if you work with like, you know. Department of Are you Defense thinking like a, almost like a CPA, like the way a CPA they they take um, continuing education, they have to pass a board, they have to you know, abide by rules. Yeah, I think it's I think it's possible that it's going that direction, and I think that there should be some maturity just in the information security uh, realm. Yeah, and uh, if you're not going to develop it in house, you're going to have to do it somehow. You'll have to outsource it or something because. You know, it's not it's not enough. The things that we've been doing in the past aren't really enough. Like you can't just rely on your like your antivirus and um, you know your RMM tools and stuff to give you a full picture of what's going on from a security yeah. perspective. And so you know we got to talk about that. We got to start a conversation. So I've been writing uh, a lot about that, and I've been putting some materials out. Um, you know, to try to uh, help other folks who are either independent IT consultants or people who are uh, working for a managed service provider like myself to to kind of understand that there's this whole other field of information security out there and, and we need to do a better job of uh, tuning into that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I like where you're going with this. Now, you're also, um, and maybe you've always done this, I, it, when, when I talk to you offline, uh, th that part I can't speak to, but what I'm getting at is uh, you're, you're delivering content and using different modalities. So you've got the written word. Yeah, obviously you have digital and then you're, you're doing some video snippets or video courseware, right? Yeah, yeah. And I haven't, this is all kind of like behind the curtain right now, but it's, that's what I'm working on. And I'm uh, recording some content and I'm looking to look for a platform to publish that on. I'm not sure if I'll use like Pluralsight or Teachable or something like that, just something to get it yeah. out there. And, uh, and and make it available. And um, and yeah, and so, I, you know, a lot of my written content has been highly popular. I've gotten, you know, a lot of attention from that, a lot of sales, a lot of traffic. And so I thought, you know, this is an area that I feel pretty strongly about, pretty passionately about. And I think that it makes sense to present it in more than just a written format. I yeah. think that there's a lot of people who learn um, from different ways. So I can probably hit a bigger audience if I um, give them multiple options for consuming that, so. Yeah, yeah. And I was just on a, a, pod, a, a broadcast the other day um, with a, a network out of uh, the Portland, Oregon area where they kind of talk the seven learning styles, but there's really three, you know, so some people read, some people watch, some people listen. Um, and, and this was a, a gentleman who's a proponent for his YouTube channel and has built up quite an audience. So that would be the watching audience. And then he said his wife likes to read. But Hey, let me let me take the conversation a slightly different direction, um, and then we'll call it good. But it sounds like what you started off with about uh, hitting it head on about you know professionalism and ultimately credentials. It sounds like the debate we had um, some time back with the MCSE era 
there were lawsuits about the word engineering uh, for a Microsoft certified system engineer. Maybe you recall that conversation because what you had is you had mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and people that have a, 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 a typically a degree in engineering and B, pass some board certification and, you know, raise their hand and take an oath and that kind of thing. They, they said, we're real engineers. <laughs> And yeah. you can't just be a Microsoft certified system engineer. So um, that that that's what came to mind for me as you were describing that. Does that make sense? That that there there's going to be some board level authority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's going to have to be because uh, you know as an MSP we have access, we have basically you know full access. We have the keys to the kingdom for so many small and mid sized yeah. businesses. And so for the adversaries out there who are you know, uh, deploying ransomware. So it's one-stop shopping, and they can go load up um, all at one time. And so that puts a larger target on our backs, and we have to treat that appropriately. And in, as well, the nice thing about, you know, for most organizations, right, security is a cost center. That's all it is. It's like, well, we got to spend money on security. We got to be secure. It kind of yeah. sucks to spend this money. All right. But for yeah. an MSP, it's yeah, it is a cost center for you. You have to be more secure, but it's also potentially a money maker, right? And so you can actually. Once you build up your security, your SOC internally, you can lease that service out to your customers and help make them more secure and raise the bar all around. So I think it's really a win-win scenario. I think it's a big area of opportunity um, for service providers. So, All right. Well, we're going to keep in touch. Uh, and any projected date on that, I want to make, I want, as I'd like to do, I want to make a note. Uh, might this be out uh, Labor Day or, or early August? Yeah, or what do you think? I would say more toward like, yeah, fall, Labor Day, most likely. I mean, it's got, you know, I've got a quite a bit to put together before then, and I've got a, a good draft, good outline and everything written, but it's, uh, it's you know, you know how it is to record like professional content and stuff. It takes some time. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. You're, you're, you're preaching to the choir. Well, sir, by the time we talk to you again, it will be after. After uh, this, the summer solstice and the Fourth of July, so enjoy both holiday celebrate as as you may. <laughs> All right, thank, thanks, Alex. Indeed.